welcome back from lunch. We are going to do assignment number, what number is this? Six. Actually, it says five in here, so naturally it's six. All right. Uh, I know the numbering's still off. So we're going to do this one together. So um, go ahead and open up a notepad or a word or something so you can put your answers in it. Or oh, download the assignments and then open up the assignment so you can start editing it, putting your answers in. Um, what we're going to do is walk through the commands, and this is what you're putting in the file, actually. Um, and then there's some questions I'm going to have you answer on your own as we go through this. So the assignment should be done using an X term session. Well, terminal will work, actually. Uh, to try out the following network commands. Uh, so for each question, type the command that accomplishes it and paste the results below in the question. All right, so we're not necessarily going to be doing a lot of pasting of stuff, but if you cut and paste from the Telnet window, that'll be sufficient. And I'll tell you for each one of the questions what you want to write down in terms of the answer. And uh, the reason why we're doing this together is because I had to make some changes to some of the... Uh, Oh, I put JK. I wonder if that works. Uh, it changes to some of the commands uh, because some of the websites are uh, down or they're just, it's just old. So uh, I've changed some of them around a little bit. So if you've worked ahead on it, you may have noticed this already. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is number one, we're going to ping your NIC card or localhost. So log into the server. You could do it from the server or you could do it if you have a MacBook. You can do it from a MacBook. Um, actually, let me see if it works from a server. I'm going to log in the server and do it from the server. Uh, let's see if I can get to the server. I want to see if actually ping works or if FTP works, so it should work. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. I oh, found it in here somewhere. There it is. Roots. Let's go this way. So your local host is the name of your server of who you are. And the question is, you know, will that work? So let's just try it. If I type in ping space localhost, I see that it is working, and this is through my Telnet connection. So I can see that, wow, I've got, and if you don't actually have to do a Telnet connection if you're on a MacBook. And then I can press Control Z or Control C, stop it if you'd like. And you can kind of see, well, what is ping doing? Well, it's seeing if the connection is active. And it's showing us that we're on IP6, and it's localhost. It's giving us some information. I've got 127.0.0.0.1, which is IP address of the local uh, lo local support for localhost. This is actually the default localhost IP address. I don't necessarily even know what my IP address is. Um, if I wanted to know what my IP address was, I could type in a command called ifconfig. It's like IP config on Windows, but on Unix it's IF config. IP config doesn't work, it's a Windows command. Um, so let's see, if I wanted to see who I am, I could see that I'm at 23.253.55.142. This is the SSH server I logged into. So I know which server I'm on, and then I can tell, well, what am I, you know, in terms of my local, on my Ethernet route, I could see I am Ethernet address 10.209.98.46, which is my current location where I'm at. Um, and I can see I have some other settings done here, and I've got a local uh, a link, local loopback set up. And uh, you can basically get all your generic network information from ifconfig. The ping is the one that's going to see if something is reachable. So for the command in here, ping your NIC network interface card is what that is. This information here is actually coming from a NIC. This is your local Ethernet port 1, port 2, port 3. If you have one or two, three or four Ethernet cards in there, it's going to show you the local MAC address, a hardware address, the MAC address. If you're on a wireless router, it'll show you the wireless stuff. So a lot of the networking stuff gets troubleshooted through ifconfig. So just, just jot that down as one of those commands that comes in handy and ping is going to basically tell you whether or not the uh, server is reachable. So if I opened up another window here, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you something here. And I'm not going to log in to the network this time. This time I'm on my MacBook and I'm going to type in uh, ping localhost. And I'm going to see 
I still got the same kind of similar information coming up. I'm going to let it go for a little bit, showing me the time it took to get there from, to, to ping myself essentially. If I stop and I compare the time it took me to print myself here, to ping to reach myself, the distance it took me to reach myself here, and I compare it with the distance it took me to reach myself over here, this one's actually kind of faster. Which tells me this processor on this network is probably running at a higher IP. In fact, if I take a look here, I see IP6 over here, and I know I'm on IP4 over here. <laughs> so I know that the IP that I'm using is different. The internet protocol that I'm using is different on both of these two computers. One, this is on the network. This is on the this is on route from the Amazon server, and this is on my MacBook with a very old. Uh, actually, I haven't updated my OS recently, so it's. I know it's pretty old, actually. Uh, but I know this is older. For long story short, I'm getting very similar information. I still see 64 bytes. I still see it's coming from here and going to there. And I see pretty much the same information, but I did notice a little bit of difference. So the question I wanted to ask you was, uh, what's the average delay? This is the average delay here. You don't have to do like a whole average. If I already guess at this average delay, I'd say it's probably around 60, 60.60, probably. It actually displaced. Does it, where does it, where is it displayed? At the command prompt? Yeah, so. Uh, let's see if I run it again. Oops. Um, you might want to do it in batch. Okay, uh, let's, let's, actually, this is a very good experiment, actually. Uh, let's change to bash. Oops. I think I am in bash, though. Uh, no, you're in bash. I am in bash. Yeah. And, oh, no, no, actually now I'm really in bash. I wasn't in bash before. I was in a different version. Uh, ping localhost. You could kind of come up with your average on your own. You might have a different output, actually. Yep. Yeah, so you might have a different output. If I was out here, this is my other one where I'm on the I have one of these on the server and one of these is on. This is going to go endlessly until I stop it. Uh, what did I do with my... Hold on a second. Oh, here it is right down here. Yes. If uh, hold on a second. Uh, local. Let me just ping the local host here because this is on a different server. Assuming you guys are on this local host. Which line are you saying that I should look at? If you just, can uh, that. Control C. Yeah. yeah. There, there, yeah, I didn't control C, I control I controlled uh, Z I control Z it. I didn't control C it. So you see when you stop the pinging, yes, okay, so you can get the average from here as well if you wanted to. Um, or you can calculate yourself if you wanted to. So long story short, this one shows up a little bit better. Oh, this one's still going. Let me control C this one. And I get the same results here too. So, so. so just write that down, that's the answer to the question. Your answer is gonna be a little bit different depending upon what server you're logged into and yeah, what's going on with that. So that's number one. Pinging is a good feature, good, good utility to use when you're trying to figure out if something is connected. So you can yeah. ping yeah. any local, you, know, you can ping any address. Um, actually, pinging google.com, <laughs> ping space google. Oh, google's up. Um, what you could also do is ping local loops. I don't know anybody's local address, but if I did that, I can go ping. Oh, actually, let me ping myself here. Um, I have config. Um, on my local, I can ping my router, actually. I can ping my um, local loop. Uh, let's take a look here. Hmm. Like ping 192.168.1.1, just generally the router. There you go, it's pinging the router. So it's, a, it's the one that's going to be uh, giving me um, DNS lookup, or excuse me, it's going to give me um, D DHCP uh, addressing. So if I'm, let's say, for example, ping 192.168. Dot one dot uh, one oh two. I don't know who that is. Oh, it's somebody. 
<laughs> so somebody's on one of that's probably me I don't know uh, so I've got this address here so you pick the address that you're looking for and you're trying to see the reason why we're doing this we're pinging we're just sending a byte sending a byte sending a packet we're trying to see if that connection is up and running so we do that in Unix to make sure that our terminal is up and running and then we then we go over to the terminal and figure out well if we can ping to it from another terminal on the network then uh, there's got to be a problem with the software. There's something something on the computer is not allowing it to connect to the network for some reason. So you can ping inside your network or outside your network. I pinged Google. I pinged a local loop number and I pinged a router number. So, so write down uh, ping local host and then write down the average delay and you're done with number one. So number two says, uh, what is? Let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. So, Number two says, what is the IP address of, and I put in KPL, actually I guess there is a KPL, this is a jpl.nasa.gov. Uh, so let me copy this, apparently there's a K and a JPL, yeah, unless I typed it in. Excuse me? It's Jet Propulsion Lab. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, so I have KPL in here, so this is KPL, we have JPL, let's see, let me put JPL in here. JPL works and KPL works, so one or the other. And you can see, you see the server address here, 26. So you can ping that, make sure it's up if you wanted to. And uh, it's from NASA, obviously. And uh, you can see the address, non authoritative answer, and the uh, regular NS lookup. So NS lookup is the command that you're looking for, and that is to Identify the IP address of a domain name. So it does domain name resolution for you. It does an NS lookup. So you've got the, the namespace lookup to take the domain that's in text and translate it into words, uh, excuse me, into an IP address. So if I did that uh, NS lookup google.com, well, I got a lot of them. Um, I get the, the regular. Well, let's see. Looks like the base is 2.216381583, and uh, looks like I got a bunch of branches here: seven four seven four one two three. So the extensions of 32 through about 46. It looks like the servers that I'm locally pinning from Google. So if I were to type in Google.com, I'd be going to one of these servers. So if I wanted to, I could do this. I don't know why I would want to do this, but I could just do this. And then I'd be at Google. <laughs> Instead of using the www.google.com, I just put the IP address in there. So, anyway, so that's supposed to make you aware of the fact that you're just typing in human readable IP addresses for those domain name service, domain name lookups. So, interesting exercise. Um, in the old days, people used to do denial of service attack by constantly pinging servers. Um, not such a good idea to constantly ping something to death. You know, do it like from a, in a in a route. Excuse me, in a. Um, I don't know if it's really possible to do it anymore using a straight pin ping. If you set up propagated about 50 computers that did a ping in a loop for constantly for a couple hours straight, you might accomplish the task of bringing the server down. What does that do? Every time you ping, it opens up a connection. So if you ping constantly and it doesn't have enough time to reset the connection, and you just constantly hit it with pings extensively, you could make it so there's no free connection. So when someone goes to that IP address and says, sorry, it's not working right now. No connection to open. No port left. So you're trying to just fill up the open connections, the number in there. How many you got? You got a lot on Google. It's going to be pretty hard to take that down. If you're a mom and papa website and you've got one IP address, pretty easy to take that down, actually. Uh, but don't do denial of service attacks unless you want to end up in jail. It's against the law. So. Moving right along. <laughs> so we got to, that's the uh, purpose of the NS lookup. All right. So what is the difference between the two addresses when you think about What is the IP address of Google.com? And then where do you see what is the difference? No, no, no. Uh, the second question. Number two says, what is the IP number of, and I put the wrong one in here, but you want to do this one, JPL. I just wanted to know if we are getting two addresses. You should. It's two different domains. One says JPL, and the other one says KPL on it. 
you're going to get two different sets of IP addresses. The one you're supposed to use is JPL. I accidentally mistyped this and I put a K instead of a J and it actually happened to be valid. So don't worry about that. Just change the K to a J <laughs> in your answer. <laughs> or use K. I really don't care what the IP address is. The yeah, idea is for you to look up and use NSLOOKUP, which is the command that you're going to find the IP address for. So you also also do that with Google. Same technique. So you put the command NS look up Google. What you can do if you want to for the Google one, here's Google, just do this. Just go like this. And copy. <laughs> and then come over and paste it. If you want. They're all valid. Or you could just do the main one if you want. You could just do the main. Oh, that's JPL. Uh, here's Google. You can do this one here. Server and then address. If you want to do it that way. Well, actually, really, the server is this one. This is the main server. If you want to give it just a main server, that's fine as well. But they have all these sub trunks from the main server, which is really the address of all of the different routers that are reachable from California or from our regional area. If we were somewhere else on the network, we might have a different connection. I mean, we might, if you did this from home, you probably gonna might end up with different results depending upon where you live, because your local Google is going to be a different server. For the DNA, it's going to pick the, the, the server closer to you in the trunk, server farm trunk. But that might be the complete list. I don't know how many servers Google actually has. So then you want to ping Google. So uh, also do it for number three. So number three is uh, give me the IP address of Google. Same technique as before. So write down the command and then write down the IP address next to it. So for number four, it says ping Google and JPL. That's the one above it. We already did that one. What's the average delay to Google? Well, I'm going to have to figure that out. What's the average delay to JPL? Is JPL actually a, let's see, or is that an abbreviation? Uh, let's see. Ping Google. Uh, here, actually, let's just ping JPL. I don't think JPL is going to work. No, JPL's not known. I think it was that full address before. So it was an abbreviated full address. So use this address up here. You already have it up here because you already did it up here, so you already have that average delay. So you basically compare the two of them, Google and this other one that we looked at, and tell me, uh, you know, which one, well, actually you don't have to. It's just basically a comparison exercise. So. Now we're going to trace route to Google. So copy or type in trace route space google.com. Hit copy. Let's, let's see what happens when we do this. So trace route. And it doesn't ping constantly. It's not the ping of death. It doesn't ping until it dies. Instead, we see a warning that Google has multiple addresses, so it's going to use the main address. And the trace route to Google, we had there's 64 hops maximum and 52 byte package that were used. And we see we have a 21638, this address here that took a couple minutes and it went to this one. And we see these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we go, what in the world is this showing us? So then we get smart and we go, let's let's just go man space trace route. Oops. Oh, I'm on the Oh, there's no man pages on the huh. There's no man pages on the server. Uh let's just do this one. Or maybe I'm on my local. Let's see, new window. Yeah. So we're in this we don't have man pages on the server. That is ironic. So I did it on my bash on my MacBook. Uh, I'm surprised. They, they, didn't didn't have they don't have trace route either. You got to be kidding me. Uh, don't worry about trace route. I'm going to show you what trace route does. So. Uh, pr prints the route packets that take to the network host. So from point A to point B, it's tracing the route. This is exactly how it sounds. If you look in here, it says, you know, the Internet's a large and complex aggregation of all these networks and 
connected together by gateways, yada, 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 tracking the route, one's packets follow. Trace route utilizes the IP protocol time to live field and attempts to elicit a uh, time exceeded response from each gateway along the path to some host. We're not necessarily interested in the uh, in the results as much as we're interested in seeing how many and or what path is it taking. So this tells you approximately looking at this, oh, San Jose 1, San Jose 1, San Jose 2, San Jose 3. We went from an edge, well, we're on an edge server here, too. All these different server locations went from San Francisco. That's interesting, though. We went to San Francisco, back to San Jose. Wow. Our packets left here. They went to San Francisco, and then they came back to San Jose to go to Google. That's interesting information here. It's not the most effective route when I look at this thing. If you have a MacBook, you can run it. If you're on a server, don't worry about running it. I'm going to tell you what to write down there in a second or so. Uh, but uh, that's like, what's fast metrics? You know, that might be the server that's doing our routing to San Francisco, actually. It depends on our service provider. Our service provider is not here. We're connected to some place in Arizona, probably. It's an Amazon service. We're either in Arizona, Oregon, or Washington where we're actually connected, which I think is where our Amazon servers are. So it's going to San Francisco and then going to San Jose for our local <coughs> our lo local loop lookup. Anyway, long story short, let's go back to the instructions here and take a look. This is the command that you would type in. So don't paste the results, just put trace route space Google. And then for the purposes of completing this assignment for those people who showed up today, write we go to San Francisco, then we go to San Jose. That's the answer to this question. So, when it says, and paste the results, don't paste the results. You don't have any results. Unless you want to paste the results, you don't want to paste the results. Even if you have the results, just put, we go to San Francisco, then we go to San Jose. <laughs> All right. So also trace route, you can't do this one either. This one's in Finland. So we're going to go to Finland. Then we're going to come back to San Francisco. <laughs> Actually, probably go to New York. Then we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Finland first. We're gonna go all the way to Finland. So let's see how we're gonna do it. We're gonna trace the route here, and we're gonna go to this Garbo US FI for Finland. So let's go. Edit copy. I gotta make sure I'm on my local now. This is my local. A little bit longer. Wow, a lot longer. Nor do network, oh, from France. So we're going, we're tracing the route from San Jose to Finland. So we're going to start in San Francisco. We're going to go to San Jose because our server is in Oregon or Washington. So we're going to go to San Francisco and we're going to go to San Jose to pick us up. Then we're going to Telia. Don't know where Telia is, but there's some network. I want to say it's probably international, perhaps. I don't know. Because uh, we're on the .NET network now. Oh, we're .NET 4, level 3.NET. Anyway, then we're going to go to Nordu. Oh, we haven't made it to Finland yet. <laughs> we're getting there. We uh, Then we go to Funit, Finland. We actually make it to Finland, it looks like. Oh, no, we're still we're still on our way. We haven't made it there yet. It's taking longer. Probably weather. I don't know. <laughs> we're stuck. We're stuck on a runway right now. I sus suspect that the server is not uh, available anymore. So we're at the local area and we're looking for the server, but I think the server is probably gone. So we can't trace the route to the server. Probably means the server is not there anymore. <laughs> so we can ping it. We can't ping it. Then I trace the route and see where it stops. Looks like we're stopping around here at this IP address. So we can see how far it went. We're going to hose. In fact, if, it, if we wait a couple more minutes, it should come back and tell us that it's unreachable, is what it should say. It's, it's in Finland. We're in Finland right now waiting. To, we're trying to connect to the destination from Finland. We made it to Finland, which is actually a good thing. But uh, we're not doing very well from Finland forward. <laughs> so let's just let that run for a few minutes. If, um, if we yeah? open the link in the browser, then it opens the website. It does. So we, maybe we'll make it. We could make it. It might just be a bog down on the server. Uh, but you say this this website opens. Is this the one we're checking? Whoops. 
Yeah, Garbo Software and Freeware Program Library. No, no, that's a different one. Let's see. That's good. Well, then we can actually just check. Let's let's check the uh, let's check the IP address. Maybe we made it there, and it's stalling for some reason. So let me let me bring up another window actually here. I think I have an extra one. I'm gonna leave this one alone for a second. Here's another one. Um, what is this address we're looking at? We're looking at Garbo. Uh, look up, look up, look up, yeah, I'm like, ah, uh, we're there, we're there, we got it, hmm, we should be able to reach it, it could just be that this trace, uh, isn't going to work for us, we could try it again a couple minutes later, probably will work just fine, so, um, uh, hmm, Still going, so we'll see. It hasn't timed out. It could just be that the, that the trace route is going to take a few more minutes. It also could be that our route didn't quite make it correctly. Because what ends up happening is that when it times out, it tries another route, then tries another route. We might have actually had, you know, they always say the network is as strong as its weakest link. We could have hit a weak link. If we try it again, we probably actually might make it. In fact, I'm going to cancel this one. Try it again. And it might actually come back for us. Without all, oop, look, it's gotten farther. Oh, it's gotten much farther. Oh, no, it's stuck again. It's stuck again. So we may not be able to make it this way. Hmm, but we can ping it. We can get there, but we're not going to be able to trace the route because somewhere along the lines or something we're running into. So let's not worry about it. The idea was to see how trace route worked. So trace route to Google, case results here. Trace route to Garbo, then land and paste <coughs> results here. All you do is give me the command. So give me the command trace route space Google for number six. Trace route space garbo.u for number seven. Number eight, do we know what the answer to that question is? Which link is quicker? We don't know the answer? We have to ping Google. Google's. This one is not even this one's not even making it. <laughs> Which trace route is quicker, the one to Google or the one to Finland? Finland isn't even making it. Yeah. <laughs> Google's making it. <laughs> that one's quicker. The answer is Google. We can trace the route to Google much faster than we can trace the route to Finland. In fact, we're not even able to even get it right now. I think we have to try a little bit later. We might be able to get it. But still, it takes longer. Why? Because it's a longer distance. We're going through more hubs. We're going through more routers. So. More steps, more steps in the network. So the answer to the number eight is Google. Now, you don't necessarily have to make a folder in your home directory. I'm not going to. Don't make a folder. And uh, we're going to see if we can actually, actually maybe we should try FTP on the server. I'm going to log back into the server to see if you can do it. Let me get rid of the... Oh, I'm on it still here. FTP. Uh, FTP works. So you guys should be able to do this one. This is the FTP one. Excuse me? I know. I'm going to give you another one. <laughs> it does work. Yes. I just tried FTP. It's working on the server. Uh, so you guys can follow along in the next few minutes here. You want to type in a different address, though. Because this FTP is down. So garbo.uwasa.fi garbo is not FTPable. It's completely blocked down. Which is probably why you can't trace route to it either. <laughs> so they put something up, probably because this is used in a lot of textbooks and stuff, and maybe they're. I believe they're probably decommissioning it, and they're probably there's another alternative, because I found another alternative just fine, another teaching one. It's anonymous FTP sites so that people put up for this purpose, yeah, and universities use it to have students like you figure out how to do anonymous FTP and stuff. Uh, this one in particular has been blocked. They're done using it. Uh, so we're not going to use that one. Instead, we're going to use this one here. So my number 11 
You don't have to make the folders, by the way, because we're not going to download a bunch of images and stick it in the folder. So don't worry about making the folders. What we can do is just in the main, whatever folder you're in, it doesn't really matter. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to start an anonymous FTP section, session with this website right here. So go ahead and type it. I'm going to show you something else. You can do it all in one command line. Let me show you two ways of doing this. You can type in FTP space, and I'm going to do it this way. Or you can type in FTP and then type in open. So if I go FTP space, and then I'm going to type in, I'm going to paste this in here, garbo. Dot, I'm going to put garbo in here because I know it's wrong. It's going to sit here and hang because garbo's down. So I don't want you to use Garbo. I want you to use this one here. It's ftp.ed.ac.uk. Leave it on here for a few minutes so you guys can type that in. It should connect just fine. I just tested it at lunch. It should work. <laughs> it's the one they use as a replacement for this one. If you type in FTP, you have to go open. If you don't type in FTP, and you just type in FTP, if you don't type in FTP by itself, if you type in FTP by itself, if you do this, you're going to, oh, I'm in FTP. You have to go open space. If, or if you're not in FTP and you want to go into FTP, you can type in FTP space, and then you type in the uh, address. Let me leave the address out here so you guys can see it. Oops. No. My copying and pasting skills are not that good today. Let's see. Edit, copy. FTP space. Paste. There we go. Takes you to connect it to Lewis.uc, USC, University of California server. And this is actually uh, in the UK, believe it or not. So we're now in London, somewhere in the UK, I should say. Not, maybe not London. We're in Edinburgh, anonymous FTP server at the University of Edinburgh. <laughs> All right, but they have been generous enough to publish this out on the internet. So uh, we're connected to, and uh, welcome to the university, yada yada. Now on the bottom, it's going to ask you for your name. Well, we don't know what our name is. We're not. We don't have an account here. We just want to come in as anonymous. Down at the bottom where it says name, type in anonymous. A N O N Y M O U S. Anonymous. And it's going to say that you're a guest. Guest login is okay. So if you turn on, and the system admin would have to turn this on, turn on anonymous FTP capabilities. Then anyone who wants to can connect to the server anonymously. Most of the servers are going to want an email address to track who it was. Don't put your real email address down there. I'm going to put test.yahoo.com. So your password is an email address of some sort. It doesn't have to be a real email address, but make sure it's in the email address format, at yahoo.com, at google.com, or something. And then don't put your real stuff in there. Otherwise, you're going to get junk mail from the server, probably. Who knows what they're going to do with this. If you press return, it should tell you that guest login was okay, that the access restrictions apply. Yeah, they're not going to let you do very much. And a remote system type is Unix, and it's using a binary mode to transfer files. So you don't actually have to switch to a binary mode. If you wanted to switch to a binary mode, you'd type in BIN. Now you're in type set to I, but you're already in a binary mode. What does a binary mode mean? Anything you want to transfer back and forth, your FTP, file transport transfer protocol, you're going to FTP back and forth. So what does it mean at this FTP prompt? Well, you're at a Unix prompt. You type in ls and I see the directory. Can I type in cat something? Um, actually, let's change the directory. Change the directory to pub, P-U-B, because there's 56 files in there and it's owned by other, which means that's something not the root. So this is why I look at this and go, on by root, on by root. Well, you're not going to go into that directory because you're not going to have access to it. <laughs> Your other, what's on by other? Well, this guy is, that guy is. Well, let's find a directory. Here we got pub. So change the directory to pub and then do an ls. And you see, oh, there's some neat stuff in here. 
And so you can see that the D stands for directory. So you can go, oh, what about this guy here? Find something that's owned by other, SHA. SHA is owned by other, and it happens to be a directory, and we have read-write access on everything. And we even have execute, actually, for other. So let's go change the directory to SHA. So I'm going to change the directory to SHA. And then I'm going to go ls. And I'm going to go, oh, there's nothing in there? Wait a minute, what happened? Hmm, bin. Well, OK. There's Steve in there. Let's see. PWD. I'm at pub Shaw is my current directory. And then we can practice all of our Unix skills. <laughs> we can go, oh, let's change the directory to something else. Or, you know, I don't know. Actually, what was in here? <sighs> Nothing much was in here. Pub had the telephones, had telephone.txt, but it's owned by 999. Hmm. I don't know if we're going to have access to anything, really, but let's just take a look here. Uh, let's just go like this, dot, dot, take us back. Let's just see what's in here, actually. Um, let's see, we got telephone 999. Oh, that's an interesting group to belong to. Or I'm looking for something I might be able to cat out. Let's just see what happens when I do this. Cat telephones txt uh, invalid command. Ooh, so I can't use that command. So not all of your Unix commands are available through FTP session. LS is available, but you're not going to find a lot of like 99.9% .9 of other commands working. Other commands that you might want to use for FTP is to upload and download. Change bin, like what I just did a few minutes ago. We go back to the assignment and look and say, well, what are we supposed to be doing here? Let's take a look. If you log in as anonymous and give your email address and see what's there. So in number 13, so in number 12, there's nothing to do. Number 11, you can type this command as your answer for number 11. So, and don't worry, if you just came in and you missed the beginning of this, I'm recording it. <laughs> so you can watch it on YouTube later. Uh, but the answer to number 11 is that we're using FTP open or FTP space FTP.ed.ac.uk. That's how you're going to start an anonymous session. And then in number 12, there's nothing to do. This is just log in as a user anonymous and give your email address. And then on number 13, see what's there. Just type in ls. The ls command, if you run ls, you're going to see a bunch of stuff here. I seriously don't want you to type in all this stuff. So, actually, here's a file. It's owned by root. I'm looking for something that's just a file. Other. We got dot owner. Read, write, read. Let's see what happens with dot owner. I don't know. There's a readme. Is there a readme file? Yeah. Where do you see the readme file? That's a yeah. good one. Ah! Have you been able to open it, readme? Um, no. Let's try to download readme. Let's try that one. It's all caps, readme. So let's download readme. Um, so let's see, go to the uh, change the directory. So for number 14, instead of going to the gifts directory, you're going to change the directory to forward slash pub, which is where we're at now. But pub's just short for public. So. <laughs> and then see what's there. Should be 20 gift files. Nope. It's a bunch of other files. So you don't have to write anything for 15, or you can just say, no, it's a bunch of other files. <laughs> and then for 16, Forget about disabling the prompt for mass downloads. That doesn't work, actually. Forget 16 and forget 17. You're not going to get all 20 gifts because we don't have all 20 gifts and we don't have this feature enabled on this website, so it doesn't work. But we're going to use the get command. So in number 17, you can type in bin, but we already are in bin. We already have everything changed to bin. But get space readme would download readme. So let's do that. So get space and then all caps readme. So it said uh, that the port command was successful opening the binary node of the data readme. Transfer complete. We got 454 bytes received. Oh, I'm on the root. <laughs> so um, if I want to exit, we got the we got the README. Um, let me get this. Uh, let me do it from my local, actually. 
because I gotta exit out in order to do this one. Uh, let me go back up here. I'm gonna do it this way so I can check it real quick. Something tells me that on the server, it might not get it from security purposes. It might go through the motions, but it might not be there. So I want to check it on the server. This is the server server. This is my local computer. I'm going to go FTP. Whoops. FTP. Hello, FTP. FTP is case sensitive. Oh, did I put, what, what's wrong? Uh, anonymous. Okay, can I spell anonymous? Uh, anonymous. And a test. Here I am again. Test at yahoo.com. And I'm in binary mode. So let's see. I'm going to change the directory to pub. And I'm going to get that readme again. So I'm going to go get readme. Ah, see this one, it works. See this, this is what I was looking for. I was looking for this little line here. <laughs> so we have get for HTP, excuse me, get for FTP, W get for the World Wide Web. So I'm going to show you that one in a few minutes. But the get, you're supposed to see this, and you're supposed to be opening it up, you're supposed to be transferring it, and it goes like this with dots. This one was a really quick file. But over here on this server, we didn't get that. But it did say transfer completes. So we might get it, we might not get it. I was expecting to see this, which tells me that the bytes were transferred. However, on your Amazon server, that might be blocked. Unfortunately, they got security on that server. If you type in buy, B Y E, whoops, don't make it in caps, B Y E, bye bye, goodbye, it exits. So now if I do a list here, I should see that readme file, and there it is, actually. There's the readme file. So let's see what's inside that readme file. Hmm. Cat. Readme. Hopefully it's not nice. I mean, hopefully it is nice. It is nice. It says, some files and directories here are read only by people from the University of Edinburgh. The files and directories are on uh, microsystems. Telephones, the university telephone directory. If you think your machine should have access, but it doesn't, send some mail to me and I will add you to the access control list. <laughs> That's nice. And then here's the FTP administrator. Huh? From 1995. That's why all this stuff is pretty old. <laughs> so look at that. I got a file from FTP from some of the server that I logged on to anonymously. Because the server settings were set to accept anonymous connections. So I went to a server, I downloaded a file, and uh, in terms of the assignment, the exercise was to show you that you don't need a GUI program like CyberDuck. It's, CyberDuck is just a sh GUI shell on top of FTP commands. And uh, you can actually just go and use Unix, type in FTP. So if you log in as anonymous and you change the directory and you see what's there, and uh, for number 17, skip 16, uh, but number 17, you can type in a get space readme. You want to do that. Or telephones.txt. Telephones.txt is blocked. So if I go over to the server, 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 let's see the server, 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 not this one. This is my local host. I go to the one that's on the Amazon site, and I type in buy to get out of here. Oops, if I do it in low case. Now if I do a list, I'm not going to see... Oh, I do see the readme. The readme did work. So I can go cat, readme, and I got the same message. So I was able to download it, but I didn't see all the little asterisks and the dots. Do you know why? Actually, want to take a big, good, good guess why I didn't see that? Well, I'll just tell you. It's faster. Amazon server is faster than my server. <laughs> it's running on IP6. I'm on IP4 or something. I don't think I'm on 6. And uh, I'm also probably farther away from the server on my local host because I'm going through this 
I2 website, and I2 website's going over to Arizona, and then we're going to San Francisco, then we're going to San Jose, then we're going to Finland, or no, UK from there. Our Amazon server? Probably closer to the UK is what I'm thinking. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's probably located on the East Coast somewhere, and they're not coming all the way back to San Francisco to go to San Jose to go to somewhere else. So long story short, they're probably closer and there's faster speed. So I didn't get all the dots that went across like I was expecting to get. So, But it did work. I was able to download the file. All right. So let's go back to the instructions. So quit FTP, number 18, the command quit FTP is by BYE. So, so for some of these other ones, if you downloaded a different file, put a different file on here. It's, it's not about getting it right or wrong. It's about going through the exercise to see how it works. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you a little side tangent before we get into the next one. If you wanted to do a wget, as an example, you type in wget instead of get, whoops, wget is World Wide Web get instead of FTP get. Because we don't have to worry, for FTP we're already connected to a server, we just get whatever we want. On a W get we put in www as an example. Uh, let's go for bhacker.com. Eh, let's go for Google. Oh, how about itu.edu? Let's do that one. Oops, W get not found. Uh, w get command not found on my local. Let's go back to the server. I wonder if the server's got it. W get. Uh, what was I doing? www.itu.edu. Oh, it's on the itu.edu site. So this is the same kind of interface. It's saving index.html for us. So what I did with the wget, it went over to itu.edu, resolved the address. Here's the IP address. Actually, now you guys can all ping this one to death. <laughs> Don't do that. I'll take the server down. Our students won't be able to get connected. <laughs> It connects to the IP address, <laughs> and then uh, its uh, FTP request was sent. Finds the file. The file is going to be at that location. is going to be index.html, which is the main page. So this is really the main page that you would uh, that you downloaded. So if I go out here and go list, I see I have an index.html. If I go nano index.html, I'm going to see the HTML interface here for the website. Oh, it's Nebraska WordPress theme. Oh, see, I knew they were using a WordPress theme. <laughs> Our main website is written in WordPress. And uh, oh, we get the header with the title. Uh, so we can learn a little bit about the little social graphics or whatever you call it. Oh, what is this? Apple Touch icon. Hmm. Anyway, this is the main page of ITU WordPress template. Hmm. It's interesting. All right, so. I'm going to remove index.html. I don't really want that on my way. Actually, let's back up a second. Uh, if I have this in my directory and my directory was public, which it's not, if this was made with public access rights, then I could just go to the URL, or excuse me, go to the IP address, put a forward slash in there, and go index.html in my web browser, and I could bring it up. I don't think it's public, though. In fact, let me just take a quick look. Now I'm kind of curious. We are, uh, does anyone remember that IP address that we've been using? Here, I got it somewhere. Here. I know another way of getting it, actually. Just do it this way. I'm going to show you something. Uh, the SSH. Yeah. Seconds, in, seconds away from finding it. Here it is. Let's see what happens here. And I am in B Hacker. Actually, let me just get my path. My path's not public, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Oh, this is root. Actually, not going to work, but what we would have to do is put the directory right, change the directory rights on your subdirectory so that you went, went to this URL. I going to say there's a problem. <laughs> Because the directory rights on the main root aren't open, but you could go sub in to root, which is not going to be public, or to home, jome, home dot uh, student zero zero one <laughs> or something. And uh, if you change the rights on the directory path, made it public, you'd have a website. 
So what you do on a web server is they give you an IP address and you get a domain name and you register it to the IP address. And then they make this folder for you called public, or you make it. You can make your own folder, public underscore HTML. You make that one 777 or 750. You make it open to the public to other. You have to leave it open to other. None of this is open to other. You open it to other, and I don't think we can actually. It's not going to allow us to. And then, uh, or we probably could actually. Uh, you open it to other, and then you set, put your files in there, change the file attributes to other, and then you go to the address in, the, in a regular old web browser, and you have a website. This is how websites work. It's on a Unix server, a public HTML entry, and then everything's set to other rights. And then you use web browsers doing the same thing as this window is doing, except for it's bringing up the HTML formatted text. So if we did that, actually, when you guys are working on the next assignment, maybe I'll see if I can change the directory rights and open it up. It might be fun to see. Um, it might be fun to see the HTML page, this one here, from this directory through a web browser. Uh, I might try to do that actually, just for fun. I don't know if I'm going to have the capabilities of doing that because some of the rights have been restricted on this server. <laughs> oh, I got that from uh, doing a wget on the IT website. Yeah, I downloaded it. So the command I did for that was, uh, oh, here it is, wget. And it downloaded the file for me. So it gets on an FTP, w gets outside of an FTP. All right, let's see if there's anything left on this assignment. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a lot of stuff left. Uh, so let's see, go to your home directory. And now you're going to make, now you're probably going to need to use, I can do this on my MacBook, but you're probably going to need to use the, uh, the Internet for it if you're on a Windows machine. Because Windows uses zip, a PK zip is a utility, but it doesn't have tar. And it doesn't use gzip, which works with tar. So tar puts everything together for you. So if you wanted to make a directory, excuse me, if you wanted to tar, which is kind of a backup that you could put on a tape drive or a CD-ROM or something, it was the original intent was to put it all together in one file. So if you tarred your current directory, and, uh, oops, let me go edit, copy. Let's go back into uh, one of these terminal windows. I don't know. Let's see if tar works here, actually. I'm going to tar my current directory. Oh, it does work here. Look at that. Oh, wow. It's going to be tarring a lot, actually. But you know what, though? It's tarring my current directory on my MacBook. Or is it? Yeah, it probably is. I'm going to control C it because. Uh, that's just way too much. <laughs> it's going to go on forever because I did the root directory. So you can just control C it, stop it, get to a certain point. Um, and then you'll see an output file with a .tar extension on it. And I'm wondering where I am here. Uh, let's see. Oops. What did I call the file? Uh, I'm going to do it on my local machine. Oh, no, let's see. Uh, what did I call it? Output. Here it is, output.tar. Wow, that's pretty big already. I did it on February 2nd. <laughs> that's today. Output.tar. So if I wanted to untar it, and I would uncompress it. What it's doing is just taking everything and putting it all into one file. Why do I want that? Because then I can take this file. If I tar the whole, whole, whole network and then copy it all onto a tape, easy to find. I put the date on it from today's date. And then I backed up everything. But before I do that, I want to make it smaller so I can compress it. Gzip. See, so Gzip a tar. So let's go back to the instructions here. Number 21, I wanted you to make a tar of your home directory using the dot for the current directory. I didn't put the dot in there. That's why I got everything. from root. And I'm root, so I'm going to get everybody. Mine's going to be huge. I don't want to do that. That's why I stopped it. You don't necessarily have to do it. It might take you about 45 minutes depending upon what you got access to or what you have in there. Uh, most likely it's not going to take as long as mine. Okay, but two seconds. two seconds? Nothing in your account. <laughs> so your student accounts are pretty small. TAR, T-A-R, does not work? Well, let's take a look here. Um, if I'm on the server here, which I am, and I type in T-A-R, I should get a bunch of 
char must be specified ones of the options. So yeah, it's giving me the usage information. So if you use, it does work. If you use this command here, yeah, you have to put the switches in there. The switches you want to use are minus CVF. And you're wondering, well, what in the world are those switches? I'll just leave this over here so you can see it. I'm going to bring up the man pages for you. Oh, you have to put a space in. Uh, so let's see. Man tar. So if I do the man on the tar pages, I see tar creates and manipulates streaming archive files. So it's going to be archiving. I'm going to leave this in your view so you can see on the top of the screen I've got the tar command up here for those people who are still running it. And then for so you can see it right in this little window right here. <laughs> and if everybody else who's uh, interested in knowing, uh, tar creates and manipulates uh, archive files. So it increases uh, this implementation can extract from tar, packs, zip, jar. A couple of other utilities can work with this type of file, CD-ROM images and some, so forth. And the first synopsis of the form of the bundled option word. So if we take a look at some of the usage we have C that creates a new archive containing a specific item, which is going to be the directory we gave it. And then we have V, and then we have F. Now, F is probably going to come closer here. So the directory is the slash one. Uh-huh. That's the directory. So if you're going to use the single commands, here, this, uh, this for example, the CV, the CZF, with the format, reads the archive standard input and determines and converts it to a gzip compressed file, yada yada. The B, the C is for the directory. The F is for format, excuse me, file, all the files in the directory. I think the other one was Z, it's going to be further down in our output here. I'm not going to read you all the man pages for tar right now. Instead, I'll leave it to you to figure out, explore what those options are. I'm not going to test you on all the options. So, uh, P, Q, S, S, T, U, V. Here's V. Produces verbose output. <laughs> so you could probably leave the V off. If you leave the V off, it's not going to. I'm not going to tell you all, all the output. It'll just do it silently, and you'll, you won't have any screen output. So if you're writing a script, you could put the leave the V off because. You're not going to be able to see it because you're going to be gone. You're going to be on the beach while your tar is running. So, or maybe not on the beach today. It's kind of raining outside. Because so. remember, the computer is working for you. You're not working for the computer. So. <laughs> All right. So um, here it says list the table of contents of the tar. So now we're not going to compress it. C compresses it. Instead, we're going to list the table for T for table of contents. So we change the command a little bit here. And we're going to use it in the window here. Let me find the right window where I tarred something. I think I tarred it in here, actually. And I don't have it in here. Where am I? Maybe I removed it. Let's see. Maybe it's in here. have removed my tar. Excuse me? If it is D, it's a directory. So what if it is L? D is an L? I mean, LSLTR, we will be getting D for directories. Mm -hmm. Say that one more time. I don't know what you're talking about. Or is it a question about tar or is it a question about the directories? Change mode? Yeah, permissions oh, permission question. If it's a D, it means it's a directory. If it's a line, it means it's not a directory. L. L is a symbolic link. Um, so if I take a look, did I create it? I thought I created a tar. Let's see. Maybe I deleted it. A failure to open output to tar. Wait a minute. Oh, I didn't create it on this one. Okay, hold on. Let me find out where I created it. Too many screens open. 
Maybe I did it in here. Well, in any case, let's just do it right here. Okay. Tar minus C B F output dot tar. That's enough. Let's cross it. And less minus L. Output dot tar. It's not a symbolic link, it's not a directory though. So my rights look like this on it. it. Should be the same default rights as me as a user. So I have rights to it. So, uh, so let's see. So if I run the command now to uh, this one here is one I wanted. Paste. Whoops. Paste. You're not helping me. Let's see. Hit copy, paste. Okay, so then I see wheel. What's wheel? Hmm. Look, I have some interesting stuff in this directory. Uh, this one is listing alpha table of contents. <laughs> so, this unfortunately, I have a huge huge drive here so it's definitely listing out a lot of stuff so anyway this is the command here I'll leave it on the screen here to list out the table of contents of the tar once you've created the tar you have to create the tar and then you can the next step is to write this so write down those two commands for number 21 and number 22 and then try it out and you'll see how to do that now to compress it's real easy we're going to gzip it gzip is just like pkzip but it's a different company and it's a different utility and gzip is for unix so if we gzip the tar we're going to see a slightly different thing than we do normally uh, let's see with pkzip so here's my output.tar so i'm going to go gzip gzip space output dot tar and i'm going to wait a few minutes because this file is a Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, that's a pretty big file. 200. That's a pretty big file, but uh, it actually works. <laughs> so if I do a list now, I see now I have a tar output.tar.gz. And I go, where's my tar? It took the big file I said a few minutes ago up here. Hopefully this has kept kept it here. This is a huge file. And then, uh, so I got 230 million. Whoa. This one here is a little smaller. <laughs> Not too much smaller, though. But it's a compression utility. Makes it smaller. Took the tar away and gave it back. But it's still a tar. So I can unzip it, and then I can put it back to a tar. Or I can unzip it completely and take it all the way back from its... Uh, tape archive back to its tape archive record back to its regular directory structure or whatever it just happens to be. Great for backups, great for restores, great for utilities. Um, so nobody in the Windows world rarely thinks about backups, but Unix people think about back backups constantly because we don't want to lose our data. <laughs> so. Uh, so gzip, so compress the tar file, gzip, this is the line that you give me for 23. And it says gzip space output dot tar. Make a new directory called archive. Copy the zip file, tar file there, and compress the tar file into its new location. So if I do that, I'm gonna let's just do it here. I'm gonna make a directory. Test me. Test me. And I'm gonna I'm gonna move it actually. MV output dot tar dot gz into test me and I'm gonna get an error message Let's see test me Re rename uh, oh no 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 uh, let's get rid of this permission denied you're lovely okay uh, let's go change the mod here no actually that's not the problem uh, let's just copy it copy output 
let's go full length here. Output.tar.gz to test me. Test me doesn't exist. Didn't I just make a directory test me? Okay, finally figured out how to do that one. Change directory to test me. I got my file in there. So now if I type in this command, minus x vf, then I'm going to uncompress it. So if I type this in, failed. Uh, hold on a second. I have to change the name because it is uh, tar.gz. Uh, no, you can do it from tar. You can take a gz and zip it from tar. You can take a gz zip and unzip it. Or you can take a tar and unzip it, compress and unzip it. They're both the same. They're both compatible formats. Um, so let's see. Uh, what is wrong here? Oh, it wanted me to take the tar file and I took the gz file. But they're both compatible, actually. Uh, what do I have in here? Let me go back here. I've got this one so I can go, I can unzip the gz file using gz, <laughs> gzip, or I can take and do what I, the instructions were supposed to tell me to do. Let's go back here. Copy. Well, anyway, you run this command and it unzips it, <laughs> or untars it, I should say, if you do it on the tar command. You can actually run that on the g, you can run the gz, excuse me, gzip, unzip. G unzip, bleh, I'm talk for words here. You can unzip the G zip or untar the tar in the same fashion. They're both compatible. You get a tar zip, tar G, G zip. <laughs> it's like PK zip and PK unzip. <laughs> you put a G instead of the PK <laughs> and you got it. <laughs> All right. Expand the archive. You can do it this way too. Tar. Actually, I have a gz file. Yes. I can use tar here. It's just I have an output.tg file. I can untar it that way. <laughs> so I put the contents of the gzip file. I put the contents of this guy here output.tar.gz, uncompressed it with tar down to the directory structure itself. So here it is, if I list it out, I have, oh, bummer, all inside of test me, but I'm just going to remove test me, <laughs> which is why you want to do this. This is a, a lot of data, actually, in here. Uh, but uh, do we did we follow any of that logic? Are we good with this? So it means that... I can untar it with the tar, or I can add the z, and un which the only difference between those two commands is the z because it's a dot gz. So if I don't untar, if it's not a g, gz zip file compress, if it's not compressed, I don't need to uncompress it, and I can uncompress gzip with tar, or I can use gz unzip if I want to use that to utility as well. All right, last but not least. Uh, do the list of ex archive uh, expanded archives and paste the results? Uh -huh. Don't don't bother. Don't paste the results <laughs> because that's a that's a lot of results. I don't want to see all that stuff. So if you do it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And believe it or not, that was the last question of assignment number six. So you have assignment number six done now. What is all that noise? <laughs> Do we have any questions? Do we, anyone needs to go back? And um, this has all been recorded as well. So if you missed any part of this, we can go back and take a look at it. Does anyone have anything right now that they want to go back and take a look at? Uh, let me show you one real quick trick here, though. Uh, so now that I have this directory test me and it's full of a bunch of like two gigs or so of crap in here that I don't really want or whatever I've got in here. I can go back and uh, from the previous parent directory, I can type in remove minus r, oh, let's see, remove directory, 
rm dir minus r test me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Illegal option minus r. Let's go remove rm. Permission denied. Let's see one second here. Permission denied. Do I have permissions here? Test me applications is denied. Well, this is going to be more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> because the directory permissions on my, what I did is I zipped up my root directory on my MacBook. And I have folders in there that don't belong to me, like applications. And this is an example here, staff, applica this applications folder, trashes. Yeah. So I can't remove it because I don't have access rights to it. So I'd have to change the access mode to everything if I were going to do it in Linux. So. Uh, override. Oh, I meant, let's just do that real quick. Override, yes. Override, yes. Let's see if I'm going to be able to remove this. All the access permissions here are not right. But you know, when you're using that um, minus R, you got to be very careful because you could be removing, I could be have been removing if I wasn't typing it incorrectly, um, everything in my folder or everything in my root directory. So The other way to do it is just use the GUI, which I'm going to resort to momentarily. <laughs> but are there any questions about uh, for your in purposes of your drive, you're going to have a little easier abstraction, plus it's not on your computer, so you don't have to worry about removing stuff that you care about. Um, so, do we have any uh, questions or anything on this one? All good? That was assignment number six, and all the networking stuff we really need to know in terms of Unix. Linux. So, this is not really a networking class, it's a Unix class, so we don't necessarily need to know very much more. But those are the common system administrative Unix commands. So, let me stop this recording. <laughs>